Hey y'all, it's Brandon with Voodoo Forge. Continuing my cutting steel uh, videos, I want to talk to you about my uh, small uh, bandsaws. Uh, they're horizontal vertical. Uh, I mostly use them uh, in the, the horizontal cutting capacity, but I've got two of them. They're little, they take a 64 and a half inch by half inch blade that's, that's available almost everywhere. I mean, you, you can get these, uh, even even uh, small towns have a store that carry these. If you live in a city, of course, it's not a problem. But one of them came from Harbor Freight, and the other one uh, came from Northern Tool. Um, and uh, I keep one of them permanently set on 45 degrees. I discovered there's something about the Harbor Freight one, the, uh, the distance from, I guess, the table. Um, is a little bit less and it is actually better at cutting 45s than the one from Northern Tool. Uh, longer, longer pieces. Uh, so it, it stays permanently set at 45 degrees. The other bandsaw, uh, it stays at 90 degrees and if I have any other angles to cut, it's the one I, I move around. But these, these are the saws that I use every day. Um, I use my chop saw, of course, to get big 20 foot pieces of material Smaller, but then my, my project job cutting goes on on the bandsaws. They're quieter, they don't make a, a huge mess, they don't throw sparks everywhere, it has an automatic shut off, I can put a piece of material in it and go do something else and not worry about it. Um, but I'm going to show them to you here. Uh, I've got to change the blade on one of them, so I'm going to uh, change the blade and uh, I'll show you cutting with them both. Uh, uh, horizontally and vertically. Um, we'll talk a little bit about cutting oil and, and anyway, let's look at these things. This is the uh, uh, Northern Tool one. Uh, it, it's ridiculously easy to operate. Check your uh, blade tension. Uh, and before you start doing much of anything, you want to check your tension, make sure it's, it's not too tight, not too loose. Uh, put your material in. Drop it in here. Of course, you know, if we're making cuts, this is going to be marked. What I do is I'll actually make sure where it's lined up on my line. And then cinch it down. And make sure this is good and tight. You don't want that to get loose. Then this is the on off switch. Pick it on. Okay, now that took less than uh, two minutes to cut through that. And as you saw, it automatically, it's real simple. It just has a, a piece um, right here that when it, when it cuts through, it drops down and turns the uh, saw off. Okay, using it as a uh, vertical band saw, it's really pretty simple. Just watch your daggum fingers. like on the tops of hooks or uh, uh, anything you need to split the material, forks, anything like that. I'm definitely not advocating starting out this way. Those things you should learn how to make them by cutting them with a chisel or a hot cut. But once you do have those skills mastered, you can do your slitting like that. You can cut your material uh, on a bandsaw and it's it's quite a bit uh, easier quicker and uses a lot less fuel so you you can uh, you can make a product uh, for a little bit less money than if you did it all uh, by hand you're still this is still doing it by hand you're using a power tool but it's it's not like you're you're plugging it in and a computer's doing the work but that's uh, one of the things I mainly use this for as the, the vertical end of it. Okay, you can see down here, this is a cut off small pieces cut uh, from uh, around the, the little 
Harbor Freight saw that I keep at uh, 45 degrees. Uh, I have a lot of uh, fabrication jobs that require 45 degree cut and that's that's why I have the two saws. Um, I am planning on building more sturdy uh, bases for them. The uh, uh, Harbor Freight base the saw seems to be equal quality to the one that came from Northern Tool, but the base was just crap. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to build a new uh, base for it. And these are not the only two places to get saws this size. I know uh, Jet makes one, uh, several other companies, but for the price point, in our reality, I, I can wear out two of these for what one Jet cost, and I just don't see it being any higher quality. Uh, there are some parts other than the blade that you need to uh, keep an eye on and check and replace every so often. These bearings right there, uh, they're commonly available. You can get them at uh, 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 TSC, uh, places like that, anywhere that, that carries that sort of stuff. Fasten all. Uh, I believe I said that right. But anyway, those bearings are, are readily available. You can order them or you can go to stores and pick them up. Just keep an eye on them. They'll, they uh, they get a little worn and uh, you'll start to cut crooked. Um, I have discovered that the saw that I keep at a 45 will start giving me an uneven line with a dull blade quicker than the one that cuts at 90. So... Uh, once, once it starts doing that, uh, I pull the blade off of this one and hang it up. And when, next time I snap a blade on the, the one that's set at 90, I'll put that used blade. And I can usually get 10 or 15 more cuts out of it before it breaks. saws. Like I said, the, the one that's set at 90, I use it at least every day. Today I wasn't even doing any blacksmithing or welding or anything and I cut four or five pieces of steel that I used on my chicken coop today in it. I use those saws constantly. I had two of these saws before I had a porta band Looking back, I probably would have gotten a porta band first, knowing what I know now, just because with these saws, you have to bring the work to the saw. With the porta band, you have the ability to take the saw to the work. I do not use the porta band every day, though. I use at least one of these every day. So there's that to take into consideration. Uh, if you ever get cut on one of these saws or any saw, they will carry a lot of funky stuff into the wound really quickly. That's why we keep the uh, big bottles of hydrogen peroxide and you can really flush out a wound immediately. Uh, these are, we keep a couple of them in the shop in the first aid kit and if you, if you get cut, blast it out with that and that'll help infection uh, from, from being as bad. You're still gonna have an infection, but it, it'll help it. So just keep that in mind, dealing with the safety. Also, I don't wear gloves uh, when I'm using it in the, the vertical position. I would rather take a cut to the finger than have one pulled off. So that's, that's just me. Uh, do your own thing there. Uh, just in case you can't tell, I uh, left some stuff out of the, the first cut I did of the video and I wanted to make sure I got them out in. Those little band saws are four by six inch vertical horizontal band saws and um, while you saw me use cutting oil a couple times I didn't I don't think I really explained it uh, as, as much as I should have uh, this that I've been using is mystic metal uh, two mover it's um, it's just cutting oil use it drilling tapping uh, band saws any anytime you're, you're cutting metal slow like that what it does is it, it lubricates the cut it helps carry off um, 
the material that's being cut so it's, it's it, it lengthens the life of your blades uh your drill bits your taps your dad, any, anything like that it just it makes that stuff last longer it's use cutting wool this particular one this is like environmentally friendly or this was on sale so i got a bunch of it uh not that it's not good that you know uh you can use this and it won't hurt the unicorns um but anyway uh uh, I hope y'all got something out of the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the questions comments down below. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, hit the like button down there if you enjoyed the video. That helps me out. So uh, anyway, uh, y'all behave yourselves now.